First at four, breaking news from President Biden why the countdown to the 4th of July is yeah, becoming true. even more important. We'll talk about his new vaccine hey. goals. One of the suspects in an alleged plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer is brought to Michigan, where that case stands this afternoon. Good afternoon, Ben. Hey, Karen. Hey, Karen. The rain chances won't let us out of their sight. We're going to get wet again before the sun goes down. We'll time that out and some changes to Mother's Day weekend as well. Paula? Michigan's teacher shortage hits a critical mass, and we've now hit the point where we have run out of road to kick the can. We're going to take a look at some recent research that just doesn't bode well for our children. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon. Let's start with breaking news from Ann Arbor Township. Two people are dead after a rollover crash on North US 23 near Plymouth Road. Police say an SUV was heading south when it crossed the median and then struck a semi truck. Two people in that SUV died from the crash. No word on the condition of the semi truck driver. Both directions of US 23 will be closed for a few hours as police investigate the crash. Meantime, traffic is being directed off at Getty's Road. We'll have updates as they become available. We also have breaking news from President Joe Biden as he sets a new vaccine goal. He wants 70% of Americans to have at least one dose of a coronavirus vaccine by July 4th. We were initially focused on getting enough vaccines for every adult. Well, we did that. We have enough vaccines. Now that we have the vaccine supply, we're focused on convincing even more Americans to show up and get the vaccine that is available to them. If we succeed in this effort, as we did with the last, then Americans will have taken a serious step towards a return to normal. The president says the next phase will focus on making vaccines more accessible and convincing people who are reluctant to get their shots. The government has launched a new website to help you find a location near you at vaccines.gov. Or you can text your zip code to this number, 438-829, 438-829. You'll get a reply with the locations near you that have vaccines available. The White House is also gearing up to vaccinate children from 12 to 15 years old if they are approved for a vaccine. We're sorting through the president's plans right now. We'll have more at 5. From Macomb County to this neighborhood on Detroit's west side, we're tracking efforts to get more people vaccinated against COVID-19 here in Michigan. The city has people going door to door to spread the word about Detroit's neighborhood walk-in clinics. It's all about boosting the city's lagging vaccination rates with some one-on-one -on -one attention. Plus, $50 debit cards are available if you bring a Detroit resident to get a shot if you are part of the Good Neighbor program. Meantime, today, the mass vaccination site at Ford Field started giving out the one-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The site is also distributing second doses of the Pfizer vaccine to anyone who needs one, no matter where they got their first shot. You do need to wait three weeks between those shots and bring your vaccination card with you. Ford Field is also now accepting walk-ins seven days a week between 8.30 in the morning and 7 at night. FEMA is in the final few weeks of this operation. It's scheduled to close the vaccine site on May 17th. Well, let's move over to Macomb County this afternoon where elected leaders came together today to urge everyone to get vaccinated. Kimberly Gill with the latest and Kim, they're emphasizing how easy it is for anyone who wants a vaccine to get one. Karen, good afternoon. Yes, Macomb County leaders say it was a big challenge early on to get shots into arms. Now they believe there's more supply than demand. Their new push includes making vaccinations available at 14 different sites across the county. Same day appointments are available. So far, about 49% of Macomb County residents have had at least one dose of the vaccine with 38% fully vaccinated. County officials say seniors have done their part with more than 70% already vaccinated, but County Executive Mark Hackle says there's still a whole lot of work to do. There is no law mandating it, so people you know, have a right to make a choice and make a decision. But understand here in Macomb County, um, we are gonna continue uh, to try to make it available for folks not just coming to this facility. Um, we're putting it in the neighborhoods. We're taking it out with our outreach that we have, uh, whether it's the congregate care, people that are homebound. So there are plenty of opportunities. Anybody that wants to get vaccinated, there is an opportunity to get vaccinated. Hackle says the county's COVID trends are moving in the right direction. Test positivity rates and hospitalizations have gone down slightly due to more people getting vaccinated. Karen, we'll keep you posted on these efforts. For now, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you.
Right now, we are going to check in on the entire state's vaccination rate. Governor Whitmer using that number as a barometer for reopening Michigan. This afternoon, just over 50% of Michiganders have received at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. 55% is the first milestone, and that was set by the governor. That's when all business sectors would be allowed to have employees come back to work. We've seen more than 2,500 new cases in the past 24 hours. That is 1,100 fewer than a week ago. We've also seen 126 additional deaths, including 51 from a records review. As the president mentioned earlier, many sources are reporting the FDA could be close to approving Pfizer's vaccines for children 12 to 15 years old. New at 5, Dr. McGeorge is going to take a look at where that pending decision stands right now. In other news, a death investigation continues in Dearborn Heights after an elderly woman is found dead. Officers made that discovery this morning at her home on Party Street near Van Bourne Road and Telegraph. Investigators say the woman was found unresponsive. First responders tried life-saving measures, but she didn't make it. One person has been taken into custody. Police are expected to release more information a little bit later. We'll keep you updated. Breaking news just in. A Wisconsin man is formally charged in the plot against Governor Whitmer. Brian Higgins had been fighting extradition to Michigan but dropped his appeal and is now in custody in Antrim County. The 52-year-old faced a judge this afternoon over Zoom. The judge ruled that he is allowed to leave Michigan, but he's required to wear a GPS tether and post bond. He was given a 10% bond of $100,000. He's due back in court on May 12th. In the first forecast, a few stubborn showers could be hanging around for the next few hours. Let's get out to meteorologist Ben Bailey. So, Ben, when will we see the rain, and could some of us be a little lucky and avoid it? Yes, I think the earlier the better if you want to get outside and enjoy tonight because that rain is going to start arriving probably within the next two to three hours, depending on where you're at. Temperatures, though, can't quite get to average. In fact, we're barely getting to 60 out there this afternoon. Winds are noticeable. They're not terrible, and they're out of the north-northwest, so not exactly a mild breeze either. Here's the radar, and you can see that area of rain is trying to lift to the north. A little bit more of a... Um, dry spot there from between Fort Wayne and Defiance, but we will be seeing that rain push in here again, probably by six o'clock in the south zone. Everybody will be seeing scattered showers from eight to about 11, and then by midnight tonight, we should be dry, but oh boy, is there is there more to come? We'll talk about the rain chances yet to go for the week and some big changes to Mother's Day weekend as well in just a few minutes. Karen. All right, thank you very much. On this National Teacher Appreciation Day, we'll be highlighting some local tributes tonight at 5 and 6. First, we're going to take this opportunity to discuss a growing teacher shortage happening in our state. New research shows we are running out of time to find solutions. Paula Topman spoke with one teacher whose story might just break your heart. Well, we've known about this crisis for a while. Fewer teachers are even coming out of college and entering the pipeline. You can start that conversation there, but now the teacher shortage has really gone beyond the tipping point. The chalk writing on the board is not good. It indicates that Michigan's 1.5 million students are headed for crisis. Schools are having trouble attracting teachers and they're having trouble keeping the teachers. Uh, who they're able to attract. The trend is teachers are leaving classrooms faster than they can be replaced. Since August, retirements of teachers in the middle of the school year is up 44% compared to uh, middle of the school year uh, retirements during the 2019 and 20 uh, um, school year. So there was a significant rise in number of, of teachers who just quit uh, and left the classroom in the middle of the school year for a variety of reasons. And the districts most likely to suffer more are those districts already suffering most, poor and urban school districts and rural school systems. This according to joint research done by Chalkbeat, an online publication that reports on education across the nation and Crane's Detroit business. Teachers are burning out for a lack of support. Um, and in many cases, because they don't feel uh, that they, that they have the community at school, the, the aides, the paraprofessionals, social workers who are able to, to back up their work and, and allow them to get, to get on with the uh, fundamental task that they're given, which is to connect with students and facilitate student learning. Owen Bandano is the 2020-2021 Michigan Teacher of the Year who knows firsthand why many teachers are leaving some school districts 
because he was one of them. My decision to leave, which came mid-year, um, had a lot less to do with money and a lot more to do with support. I was in a building where I felt like I was not supported as a professional, um, where I was being asked to do so many different tasks and wear so many different hats that I would work from the moment I woke up until the moment I passed out on my couch because I was still working, and then I would restart the cycle the next day. I was having breakdowns in my classroom after the kids left thinking, if this is what education is, it's not for me. Um, and it, it took moving to a setting where I felt much more supported and where I was only asked to wear, you know, maybe two hats instead of five. And because Owen's story is not unique, it creates more of a problem for districts that likely have more diversity and fewer resources. So it becomes this vicious cycle of losing more teachers because you're losing more teachers. And it becomes very difficult to stop that cycle. And while this is not a new problem, it is a problem in which the can has been kicked down the road for many, many years. But research shows in the state of Michigan, we are out of road. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Now, there is some indication federal COVID dollars are being infused into some of Michigan's poor districts, but the question remains, will it be enough with enough time to entice teachers to stay? Keeping that in mind, colleges and universities are graduating fewer and fewer teachers. Still ahead, here first at four, a new twist in a celebrity sex abuse lawsuit. The judge has issued an ultimatum to the accuser who says he was assaulted as a teenager. First, tragedy strikes in an instant. We're learning more about this deadly collapse that took dozens of people by surprise. And is this a hate crime caught on camera? We'll talk about why police are releasing this disturbing video when First at Four continues.